It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. I, I just refuse to be a part of the hypocrisy. Right. You know, when it's straight out hypocrisy, it's one thing, you know, when you don't know, it's another. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to the fact of, you know, those who don't believe, you know, that, that, that a woman, you know, should preach or, or, or uh, even to the point of pastors. Some believe some can preach, but they shouldn't pastor. But, you know, I, I, I can remember challenging because. Uh, at one point when we were getting ready to have our city ride revival in Aiken, we were getting ready to have it at the biggest church in Aiken. Uh-huh. And, and, and it was a week before. Uh-huh. And, and, and it was a church to where, you know, there, there's a white pastor, a, a, a huge building. And, and, and we laid out who the preachers and the lecturers was going to be. And um, he said all that was fine, but um, no, no woman couldn't preach from the pulpit. Uh-huh. And, you know, they would have to teach from the floor. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's what they were always taught. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I went back and we, we talked with the CMF group and we told them, well, we cancel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he called me, you know, we, we can't cancel now. It's next week. I said, yeah. I said, but what, what you're doing goes against what we believe. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so, of course, you know, we want to start talking some Bible, you know, right. and saying about, you know, women this and, you know, and, and what women's place is. And I, so I, I said, I said, Pastor, I said, I, I just want you to tell me this. I said, at what point in your life that the woman who birthed you and raised you and taught you right and wrong, at what point in your life? that you become too big for her to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know me, he said, I ain't never thought about it before. I, I said, that you get to the place where, where, where you greater than your mama, that you, mm-hmm. that you over your mom, the woman who taught you mm-hmm. now can't teach you. Mm-hmm. She can teach you from the sofa, but she can't teach you mm-hmm. from there. Mm-hmm. And he said, he's well, I never thought about it. I said, well, think about it. Mm-hmm. I said, think about it. And, 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 and we went and, and we had it somewhere else. So, you know, with all of that being said, not only the world can be complicated, to some degree, the word can be complicated. But I think sometimes we, we put too much of ourselves right. You know, right. in, into the word. And, and until you know better, mm-hmm, until mm-hmm. you're open. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I can't, even though you and I were Mm -hmm. raised in the same house, Mm -hmm. same parents, same siblings, there are things that we are going to view differently. Mm -hmm. However, Mm -hmm. be be open Mm -hmm. to knowing maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's another way. Maybe my thoughts aren't 100 Mm percent right. Mm -hmm. What is another perspective? But just being open to when you hear it. Say, okay, God, now is this and and be willing to change. And I think that's one of the things that we as people of God have to know that when there is somebody or something, somebody comes along and can give us Mm -hmm. a different understanding Mm -hmm. or because with all you're getting, get understanding. And so many times we can't get understanding because we think we know it all. But we have to get the understanding and you have to be willing to listen in order for that to happen. Yeah. You have to be willing for it to listen. So let me ask you this. When it comes to because not only did you go through a divorce, but then you did get married again. Mm-hmm. Um, how was that for you knowing, OK, now I'm about to enter into marriage again? Like w- because we talk about transition piece. How did you feel in that transition? <laughs> that was a transition. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure when the moment occurred. It, it was a gradual okay. occurrence mm-hmm. because once I divorced, I was planning on being divorced. You know, mm-hmm. to me, I said, you know, this it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and, and when God said, you know, live the word, teach the word and preach the word. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to do that. I was happy to mm -hmm. do that until Jesus came back. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my total focus was on raising my children, mm -hmm. um, falling, falling in love to, to a place of contemplating marriage again was never in my train of thought. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through those five years, Mars of being separated and divorced. Um, and I keep saying, I don't care what anyone in the CSRA says. No one is yet to this day to be able to come up and say, you know, not not only, you know, well, this is his girlfriend when he was married, but even in the midst of my separation for five years. Now, there are some ladies I went to lunch with. You know, there are some ladies that I went to the movie with. But there wasn't none spending no night at my house, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, and, and I'd always say my house ain't finna become, it wasn't finna mm -hmm. become a hotel. Right. And it wasn't finna become a sports club mm -hmm. where, where, where the fellas met over there mm -hmm. and we watched games. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't until I had an, a car accident in my life that anybody besides my immediate family even knew where I lived. Mm -hmm. I, remember that. I, I didn't need folk riding by to see who car was parked <laughs> in my yard. Mm -hmm. You know, and if this, you know, I, I, I just live that life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when God did what he did and brought Michelle into my life, um, you know, it, 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 it was a shock. It, it, it was a surprise. Um, and, and, and then, you know, the, the wrestling match. Mm -hmm you know, started again. Um, again, I wasn't going to live a lie. Right. You know, so I'm either going to have to marry this woman mm -hmm. or I'm going to have to leave her alone. Mm -hmm. But we aren't going to be able to play this game. Right. You know, um, you know, in, in those five years, I, I didn't bring, you know, girls over mom and daddy house. I didn't bring them before y'all. I didn't bring them before my children. Mm -hmm. The one lady that my children know about, mm -hmm. my parents and my siblings know about, is the one who is my wife today. Mm -hmm. And I can remember having, you know, that conversation with one of my older sisters, you know, mm -hmm. when we were getting ready to have uh, mom, one of mom and dad's them anniversaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking about all the spouses who were coming and whatever. And, and I was asked, you know, well, Hammond, is Michelle coming? Mm -hmm. And, and I said then, I said, well, I said, let me say this to y'all. I said, now, out of all these years I've been separated, I ain't never bought no other woman around. I said, now, Michelle gonna be my wife. Mm -hmm. And wherever she can't be, I won't be. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we just asked. I said, I'm just telling you. <laughs> now, now, if your husband gonna be there, she gonna be there. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that, and that was the establishment from then on. Mm -hmm. But that process was probably the most challenging. Um, you know, I find myself falling in, in, in love with Michelle. Mm -hmm. You know, she came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see it coming. So, um, and, and at this point, I'm still at Laura Grove. Okay. And so um, now, you know, some decisions got to be made. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know how they felt about my former. Mm -hmm. Even though after finding out some truth about her, there were still those who um, did whatever they did with her. Um, and what I wasn't going to do, you know, because I preached there and I taught that and everything else is I wasn't going to bring Michelle into an uncomfortable situation. Right, right. right. And, and so, again, so I, I, I had that talk with God and I prayed about it. Um, even at that point, you know, Laura Grove had come such a long way, mm -hmm. you know, in the 20 something years we were together. Mm -hmm. And, um, as, as old saying go, even if you're in a play, you got to know your exiting point. Mm -hmm. And so it had come to a point for me to exit. And at that time there, there was a lot of church turnovers going on down mm -hmm. in that area. Um, police was having to be called to take some preachers mm -hmm. out of church and, you know, the 
preachers, uh, police showing up on Sunday mornings. Cause, and I'd always say it to any church I'd ever passed, mm -hmm. you know, you know, whenever you get tired of me, or I get tired of you. Mm -hmm. We can just let each other know. <laughs> we ain't got to call no police. Right. Y'all y'all ain't got to change a lock on a door. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can we, we can walk away mm -hmm. and, and everything will be all right. Right. And so long story short, you know, that's 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 basically what I did. I I, I knew um when it was time to walk away. Uh, you know, somebody challenged me that and they said, So Bush, you you you'll give up the church for that woman, huh? <laughs> And that's what I did. <laughs> I laughed. I said, no. I said, I give up a building. Okay. For that woman. I said, but never the church. Right. I said, because that woman is a part of the church. Mm -hmm. I said, she know God like I know God. Mm -hmm. She a part of me. I said, so this building. Mm -hmm. I said, now this building wasn't here when I came here. Mm -hmm. But the name of it was. Mm -hmm. I said, and long when I'm gone, mm -hmm. that name will still be alive, right. regardless of how many times the building it comes. Right. I said, but the church, mm -hmm. I said, I never get a church up for anybody. Right. And and so we were we were able to go on from there. And again, God God was able to um, j just to show me some things. And and Mars, I can walk in such a peaceful place in my life now. Because I've been at so many ends of the road. Mm -hmm. I've been at so many ends of the road that there was no U turn. Mm -hmm. And yet I come to the end of the road. And, and how do I go forward at the end? And the only way I could do it was go forward. Okay. You know, what, what's over there? I, I, don't, I don't see the way. Just go forward. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, <clears throat> the way will be made. Yes. You know, and, and so, you know, it goes back to all the preaching, all the singing that you heard, you know, when you was a child about God will make a way out of nowhere, mm -hmm. you know, and God, you know, th then, you get, then you have to begin to live this stuff. Yes. And you have yes. to begin to trust God in it. You do. And, um... And, and, and so we did. And, and when I preached my last sermon uh, at Laura Grove, uh, you know, and, and you and I talked about this not too long ago. But I, one of the things I can remember preaching is I was uh, giving my last sermon for that day. And and I was asked, um, you know, where are you going? One of my good friends. And I'm sure he won't he won't mind me calling his name. But Dr. Sam Davis, you know, mm -hmm. who was talking, he asked me, he said, he said, well, Bush, what you going to do? He, he said, where you going? He said, you got somewhere? And I said, no. Uh -huh. He said, he said, huh? I said, I don't know where I'm going, man. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. And he told me, he's, he said, Bush, you, you're a better man than me. Uh -huh. he's, he said, I, I don't think I could go and not know where I'm going. Uh -huh. I said, well, I don't know where I'm going. Like I said, I've been in ministry a long time. Right. I, I don't know who want me at this point and who don't. Mm -hmm. But I know what I do know that it's time for to go. Mm -hmm. And I know it's time for another chapter. So I, I remember saying in that sermon that somebody's wondering where I'm going. I said, I don't know where I'm going. I said, but here's what I know. I say, I'm a shepherd looking for sheep. Mm -hmm. I said, and I, I see myself going over a hill. I said, I can't see them. I said, but on the other side of the hill, mm -hmm. I hear the bleeding of mm -hmm. sheep. I said, the sheep is bleeding because they're looking for a shepherd. Mm -hmm. I said, so somewhere on the other side of the horizon, mm -hmm. It's sheep looking for a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And I'm a shepherd looking for sheep. Yes. In Marcy, three hours that day, mm -hmm. three hours that day, when I got home, three hours after I preached my final sermon, mm -hmm. I got a call from Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One hour later, I got another call from another church okay. in the local area. Okay. And from that, 
you know, I, I never missed a beat. I think I was out of the pulpit maybe one month or okay. two. Okay. And I, I'll tell you, uh, every Sunday I cried. Okay. E every Sunday that I was out of the pulpit, and I was still going to other church, but every right. Sunday I cried because no matter where I sat, mm -hmm. I, I knew everything that I would have been doing yes. at that specific mm -hmm. time. I knew exactly mm -hmm. what would have been going on. Right. And, and I wasn't there. Right. And so, you know, so I was in that place where, where God was just, just dealing, and I was just having to release. I was yes. having, you know, to let go. You know, it, it, yes. it's no turning back. It's it's no going back. You know, you, you right. got to get it out of. Right. It. You right. Know, you you got to get it out of you, and it's kind of like the thing. You know, you you can't put, uh, you know, new wine in old bottles. Mm -hmm. You know, I I got to get all of this mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to get you to the next place. Yes. And so. Uh, we, we were able to make the transition. Yes. Um, and so, uh, you know, Michelle and I, we live happily now. Uh, still got our critics out there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you know, whether you're married or single, everybody ain't happy for you. Right. But, it's, but it's cool. Right. But what I am is happier than I've ever been in my life. That's good. Um, That's a blessing. You know, the struggle that my ministry went through, through my divorce and everything, from the preachers who were talking about me to those who, you know, it was almost like I had a plague. Nobody didn't want you to, you know, I, I went from, uh, it, at some point, uh, averaging between 18 to 23 revivals a year, not including workshops, that I might would do one or two a year, mm. Mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. but God stayed with me, yes. you know. Through that, I preacher friends of mine mm -hmm. went through divorces and stuff. You know, one of them lost his mind. Mm -hmm. You know, others went through health problems. And 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 just when I would stop and think about it, you know, I know God that could have been me. Right, 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 right. You know, but but right. but he kept he kept my focus off of me mm -hmm. and made me keep my focus on him. Yes. You know, as as he began, you know, just just working everything out, mm -hmm. and and so now, you know, the ministry that God has given me is still the ministry that He's given me. Yes. You know, it's about family. Yes. It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about appreciating the value of every individual. Mm -hmm. It's about meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's about being less um, judgmental. Yes about people, mm -hmm. um, you know, ab about their situations and their circumstances because all these things help fix us, but it doesn't make any of us any better, right. you know, than anybody else. Right. Being your rapid fire, can, can I just do, for lack of a better word, uh -huh. you know, one shout out uh -huh. um, about my parents. Yeah. You know, about my parents and, you know, again, like you said, that some of the things that happened in my life made them reevaluate some things. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, everything about divorce and remarriage and all of that, you know, I, I learned from my parents, yeah. you know, and, and, and from the word. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to the place where I don't know, you know, it would probably be a conversation that you would have to talk with them. And I don't know if I'd ever want you even to have a conversation <laughs> with them. But, uh, I, I think that my re-getting married might have been tougher on them than my divorce was. Okay. And so when it came to the point where I know I was going to get, you know, remarried, mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, first people, oh, and, and we, ain't, we won't even go back into, you know, how many lies was told even before I got married that I'd already ran off and eloped, mm -hmm. um, you know, yep. oh, anyway, <laughs> but, um, and so when, when we knew that's what we wanted to do, you know, I wanted to tell my family first, mm -hmm. you know, it was always important for me, you know, to tell my mom and dad and my siblings and then my children right. you know you kind of kind of know how it's gonna go mm -hmm. but uh so i i, I want to do those things and so uh um, i can remember even on the night that we got engaged and um you know and pro probably one of the one of the daggers that kind of hit me right there is uh so you know 
you know, after I proposed and, you know, she said yes. And I said, okay, so well, you know, so I'm going to talk with mom and him. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to talk with all my siblings, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'll tell the kids. And so um, I can remember that night, I just didn't want to get the devil no space. So, mm-hmm. so that night I remember calling mom. Mm-hmm. And, well, I called the house, you know, mom always going to answer. Right. And so, you know, so, so we did what we used to do. I said, hey, mother dear. So she said, hey, son dear. And so, you know, we, we went on talking. So I said, well, mom. I said, um, I call you and daddy, you know, to let y'all know that, um, that I, that I got engaged tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mom said, to who? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I, I, I kind of laughed for a minute, you mm-hmm. know, like to say, read it, mom. You know, mm-hmm. I never said that to my mom, mm-hmm. but I'm like, you ask me who. Right. And so, as respectfully as I could, I said to Michelle, mm-hmm. the same person I've been bringing there. Mm-hmm. And so there was a moment of silence. So I said, I just want to let you and daddy know. Mm-hmm. Didn't want y'all to hear it from nobody else. Right. So we just kind of ended the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember if it was the same night or the next night I told y'all, but of course all my siblings, you know, they were just so happy for me. It was later that I told the children. Mm-hmm. So now we're getting to the day that we were getting ready to get married. We decided when we were going to get married some months down the road now. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, and I said to Michelle then, I said, well, um, I said, I'm going to go down and talk with mom and daddy. You know, I, I don't want to call them. I'm going to go down and talk with them. Well, I want to be there face to face with them. Right. You know, when I tell them this. And so, uh, and Marcy, you know about this. Um, and all my, my family, uh, you know, anybody who know us, know the love and respect that we have for our mom and dad. Right. Never want them to ever feel like we're challenging them mm-hmm. in anything, but to remind them that they raised us. Right. And they raised us to think for ourselves yes. and to have an independent mind. Right. And, you know, I go back to what you said earlier. Never to say anything that you taught me was wrong. Right. But in the words of Jesus, I didn't come to change the law, neither the mm-hmm. prophets. But I come to fulfill it mm-hmm. and to show you a better way. Right. Never say the way that you was doing it was wrong. But right. there's a better way to do it. Right. And so, um, so I did, I called them, made sure that they were going to be home that evening, went down that evening. So, you know, we got there, kind of, you know, did the intros and everything. So just kind of sat down because it wasn't going to be a long stay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know what I came there for. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to get to that. And so, you know, I told them, I said, well, mom and dad, you know, I've told y'all that, you know, y'all know me and Michelle been engaged. You know, we're getting ready to get married. Mm-hmm. I said, we're going to get married on this particular date. Um, child, you know, it, we got married on a Sunday. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm just messing with everything uh-huh. now. Um, but, you know, and here's the date that we're going to get married. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love for y'all to be there. I said, if y'all don't, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. I said, but I, I want y'all to know. I said, so that's what I come to tell you. You know, it was one of them I didn't, I didn't come to ask you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to walk 40 something year old right, man now. Right, right. Um, um, uh, early 50s, so I'm, I'm just coming to let you know I owe you that. Mm-hmm. You know, again, I don't want you to hear nothing about me in the street. Right, right. I want you to hear it from me. Mm-hmm. And so I told y'all. You know, long story short, Marcy, me, my mama, and my daddy never came back and had the conversation mm-hmm. of whether or not they was coming. Mm-hmm. But they were there. Yes. Yes. And, and that said, so, and, and even when I think about it today, it brings tears to my eyes. Mm-hmm. Because when you start to about agape love, mm-hmm. and again... I'm not saying that they that they agree right. with what I did. Right. But the agape love mm-hmm. says basically, you know, and, and, and it wasn't like I was going out there murdering nobody. Right. Killing. Right. 
That's that's where he is. Uh-huh. That's what he believes. They they love me being in the ministry as much as I do. Right. You know, I know uh-huh. when my mom and dad, because like you say, this this wasn't just something for me. Uh-huh. I'm my mom and daddy's child. Uh-huh. They they have always had to think. Yeah. You know, what is this going to do to his ministry? Uh-huh. You know, the same thing my children wonder. Right. Um. What I know is I've never had a ministry. Uh-huh. It's always God's uh-huh. ministry. Uh-huh. And so if it was a ministry I had, I would be worried. Right. But, it, right. but it's his. Yes. yes. And he's just allowing me to work in it. Uh-huh. And so I've never worried about it. Uh-huh. But, you know, for my mama and yes. my daddy and my family to be there. Uh-huh meant everything to me. It means yes. everything to me to this day. So, yes. You know, mom and dad love Michelle as if they birthed her. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they have such a love for her. And yes. Michelle feel, feels it. Mm-hmm. And and I know it touches her because she know all about my life. Yes. She know all about my upbringing. She know all about mm-hmm. what they believe. Mm-hmm. But she experiences yes. the love that yes. they have for yes. her. Yes, yes. And, and, it, and it makes her, you know, feel so good, mm-hmm. you know, to be loved by y'all, mm-hmm. to be loved by mom and dad. Love her dear. You know, so I just want to take that time to say, you know, to my mom and dad and to say to everybody, you know, that agape love is a powerful thing. It is. And, and I understand when people have wayward children and mm-hmm. children who don't do right, no, but but they still love them, and and you know, and and we sit back and talk because I talk about it too, how kids will, you know, put their parents through so much that they'll put them in a grave. Mm-hmm. But but you can't. It's hard to take the love of a parent right. away right. from a child that they birthed mm-hmm. or raised. Mm-hmm. Well, brother Paul. Billy Paul, as I call you, <laughs> I am so grateful that you yeah. um, took this time. Like I said, I know it won't be our last, mm-hmm. um, but I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you, not just being on this sofa, but being in my life. Mm-hmm. I always say I'm, I'm glad that God chose who he chose to surround me with mm-hmm. as my family. Yeah. I know I'm blessed. Yeah. And so I hope that you feel like you've been blessed, too by this conversation and i ask that you would meet us again same place same time next week for the sister speak brother break show be blessed thanks so much for joining us today if you've been blessed by today's show feel free to let us know and if you'd like to sow into this ministry become a sponsor or contact us you can reach us at 803 221 0169 or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com let's continue this journey together